AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Sweden's automakers are in enormous turmoil. Nissan has a new battery that will double the range of its electric car, and the Mustang will get a new engine to battle the Camaro. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Monday, November 30th, 2009, and now the news. The people in Sweden must be sitting on pins and needles. The news is coming in fast and furious in regards to the future of both Saab and Volvo. Saab, as we reported last week, is on its deathbed unless a last-minute deal is put together. The AP reports that Saab's CEO, Jan Ake Johnson, is in Detroit today to confer with General Motors about potential new bidders who might buy the car company. Bloomberg reports that BAIC, the Beijing Auto Industry Corporation, says, stay tuned, it may put in another bid. And there are several private equity firms that are interested as well. We should know more tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal reports that Geely has reached a deal with Ford to get the intellectual property rights to Volvo. That includes access to key technology related to safety and the environment. And that seems to remove the last impediment to the Chinese automaker taking control of the iconic Swedish brand. Nissan said it's working on a lithium-ion battery that will nearly double the power of the one that will be used in the LEAF. According to the AFP, the new battery can power an electric car for 190 miles, about 300 kilometers, on a single charge. Nissan said it would like to use the battery by 2015 and that it will cost about the same to make as other lithium-ion batteries. Car sales in the U.S. may finally be turning the corner. According to Bloomberg, November sales are expected to come in at a higher rate than last November. The seasonal annual adjusted rate is predicted to come in at 10.5 million vehicles, up from 10.2 a year ago. Mustang enthusiasts rejoice. Today, Ford announced that the iconic pony car gets a brand new base engine for 2011. The 3.7 liter Duratec V6 delivers 305 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. That's 95 more ponies than the ancient 4 liter lump it replaces. Available with either a 6-speed manual or 6-speed automatic, the company estimates it will get up to 30 miles per gallon on the highway. And looking at the numbers, they're all over the new Camaro, which delivers 304 horsepower and 29 miles to the gallon. With flocks of Tata Nanos about to descend on roads all over India, two companies have teamed up to offer buyers customization options for the tiny car. Autoblog reports that Carnation Auto and DC Design will launch a range of body kits sometime next year. The custom designs for the Nano are still under development, but judging by the pictures, they're really trying to make a statement. With one of these kits, you will not lose your Nano in the Walmart parking lot. Hey, coming up next, a look at Volkswagen's redesigned Golf. We'll be back right after this. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. Recently, Volkswagen invited us to Germany to test drive the new sixth generation Golf. You heard what I said. I said Golf. The company dumped the rabbit name again in the North American market, and it's going to go back to calling the car what the rest of the world knows it as. The Golf comes in a couple of different flavors. The two-door hatch is a value leader starting around $18,000, including shipping and handling. The four-door is a little bit pricier, starting around $20,000. But don't think these are entry-level models that are just bare bones. They come standard with amenities like cruise control, power windows, locks and mirrors, and complimentary carefree maintenance for the length of the factory warranty. And that covers things like oil changes and tire rotations. Under the hood, buyers can opt for either a 2.5-liter five-cylinder engine or a two-liter TDI diesel. The gas-burning i5 delivers 170 horsepower and up to 30 miles per gallon on the highway, 
The turbocharged diesel offers 140 horses, but can smoke the tires with 236 pound-feet of twist. Both engines have plenty of power, but the five-cylinder sounds gruff when you rev it up. The TDI is definitely the one to get, delivering tons of torque and better fuel economy to boot. 30 in the city, 41 on the open road. As for transmissions, a five-speed manual or six-speed automatic are available with the five-cylinder. The diesel offers either a six-speed manual or a six-speed DSG, Volkswagen's fast-shifting, dual-clutch gearbox. Venturing out into the German countryside and later on the Autobahn, the Golf impressed us with its solidity. It's capable on twisty roads and handles triple-digit speed with ease. On the highway, it's totally comfortable up to about 110 miles an hour. Beyond that, though, it starts to feel a little nervous, as does the driver. The redesigned Mark VI Volkswagen Golf sports fresh exterior styling that gives it a little more edge and an updated interior. It should be available at dealerships right now. Hey, this coming Wednesday, we'll be webcasting live from the floor of the LA Auto Show from 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time to 1.30 p.m. That's about 2.30 to 4.30 Eastern Time. And then on Thursday, we'll be live with AutoLine After Hours from the LA Show, but in its normal time slot. And that is it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.